One of the best methods that I've found to give my garden that tropical vibe is to grow tropical bromeliads outdoors in my UK garden. It's really giving an impression of the rainforest. But what tips have I learned along the way? Have they survived? And how would I improve things next year to really get the best performance out of these unusual, resilient bromeliad plants? I grow the majority of the tropical bromeliads in my UK garden as epiphytes. That's mounted onto the branches and stems of larger trees and shrubs. And I found that this is the best way to grow the majority of bromeliads. Bromeliads grown like this collect rainwater in this central rosette. So you can see there's just enough water there. And this is just how they would um, function in their natural habitat, say in a rainforest. They collect any rainwater that runs down the branches or makes it through the tree canopy. And that would keep the plant hydrated. Any excess water will flow out and just down to the ground where any ground cover plants will make use of that excess moisture. If you grow them in the UK and you get so much rainwater like this, because if you spent a summer in the UK, you will know how wet the summers can be. I found that this can cause the plant to rot. And yeah, it's a successful adaptation. This plant is capitalizing on any rainfall that it gets, but it's not used to getting this much. Um, so it's very useful. If you can, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. There you go. You can see the rot at the bottom there. It's just to pick it up and tip it out and then just set it back again. Um, if you're growing it somewhere that isn't as wet as the UK, then you should be absolutely fine. Now, I also grow some bromeliads terrestrially. That's to say, potted into growing medium and then just sat as a display in the ground. Now I found that these are okay provided the medium that you grow them in is really free draining. So that you can see in that pot there is a mix of orchid bark, perlite, and only a tiny bit of soil. And that is fine for them. They're not taking nutrients up from that material. They're capturing kind of leaf litter and things falling into the central rosette and rainwater and they will happily thrive like that. Now the second thing I've noticed is that the colour on the bromeliad is so much better in sunlight. So this Neorogelia has coloured up beautifully because it catches the afternoon sun. It just beams straight down here. But the Acmea blanchettiana down here, which is an orange form, is reverting back to green because it's just not getting enough sunlight now that this Griselenia shrub has grown over. So I'm going to move this out somewhere much sunnier for two reasons. One, it's going to cause that colour, that orange colour, to come back, but it's also going to help it dry out. I do have other bromeliads growing mounted on my roost tree in the centre of the garden. Now, this is both a loss and a win in my tropical style garden this year. This roost tree, which is perfectly happy and healthy on this side, has died on this side. No leaves have emerged from the stem. And it was sort of on its way out last year, so I'm not too worried. But from that, there is a silver lining. That has allowed a lot more sunlight to shine down onto these uh, Neorogelia bromeliads, and they have colored up so well. Look how bold that the purple banding is on these. It's fantastic. And they are producing pups offsets. So I'm gonna have lots of these plants to propagate from. And it just proves to me that, yes, they will survive in partial shade, but they do seem much, much, much happier in full sun, so long as you can give them enough water. You don't want that central rosette to dry out. And believe it or not, there was a period this year in the UK where it didn't rain for quite a bit of time. And I had to water just in the center there and it kept them happy, but these are looking fantastic and they look great as the evening sun shines through the garden here and it just illuminates them. And having something like this growing in a canopy just really elevates the look of a tropical style garden, especially somewhere in the UK where people just don't expect to see something like this. Look at this one here, another Neorogelia. This one is Antigone. And it's so happy that this has produced two offsets this one summer season. And there is another shoot just emerging there. I absolutely love these resilient and unusual plants. Now, something else that I've noticed that helps these plants succeed 
is the roots are primarily used to attach bromeliads to the host plant. Now they're not, um, what's the word? They're not parasites. They just live symbiotically with the plant. So the roots are only used to attach it. It's not tapping into the nutrients. It's not damaging the plant at all. Perhaps if they got really big, the weight might weigh the branch down and snap it. But just growing them outdoors in the summer season, it's not gonna cause that to happen at all. But because we're in the UK, I have to bring these bromeliads indoors into my heated greenhouse over winter to overwinter them without um, kind of leaving them out to the elements to be damaged by cold. So wrapping the roots in moss like this is giving the roots something to root into and then I just tie the bromeliad into the tree using wire which can easily be removed come kind of the forecast of the first frosts here in the UK and then all of the roots or the majority of the roots will be inside of that root ball and they will come with the plant when I move it into the greenhouse for winter. So it's causing as little movement stress as possible. Although I'm sure these plants would shrug off that stress really, really easily. Now these are overwintered in my greenhouse at about four to five degrees. And they've taken that and come through really well. Um, but the greenhouse has a bubble wrap insulation, which you can see here. And that just kind of shades them out a bit. So the colors are nowhere near as strong as they are now. They really do look good at the end of summer. So would I recommend that you have a go at growing bromeliads like this in your own tropical style garden here in the UK or somewhere else that isn't necessarily tropical? <laughs> yes. These bromeliads really elevate the space. People don't expect it. And you get so many different shapes and sizes and bright colors. And although they don't have flowers that are necessarily that beneficial to native wildlife, wildlife has found a way to live in harmony with some of the weird plants in my tropical style garden here in the UK. Now, slugs and snails hide inside that rosette that is really good at capturing rainwater. And because it's so moist, they are perfectly happy there in periods of drought. Now, although slugs and snails might not always be a gardener's best friend, they do attract predators like birds, um, hedgehogs, frogs and toads, which we all love to see in our garden. And it's all part of having that healthy ecosystem. And I've also seen birds before come and perch here and drink that water out of the central rosette during periods of drought. So it's actually helped kind of prop up the wildlife in its own way. I think plants and wildlife, they'll find a way. Um, so many plants that we see out and about in the UK just aren't UK native, but they've established here and they've become sort of a staple for native wildlife. So I think in our own patch of paradise, each plant will do its bit for some of the wildlife. So yeah, I would definitely recommend growing bromeliads like this if you've got the space, or to be fair, something like this is fantastic because you don't even need that much space, just a couple of twigs and branches and you can tie these plants into it. Now I'd recommend you try something like Neo Regelia, which is what most of the ones I've shown you in today's video are because they stay small, they produce offsets readily so that you can propagate these plants and they come in such a huge array of colors so you'll find one to suit any taste. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I think I waffled a bit, but I just grabbed the camera and went for it. Um, if you wanna talk about growing bromeliads or you wanna share pictures of any that you're already growing in your tropical style garden, then head over to our gardeners forum, growparadise.social, where you can share pictures, sign up to groups and communities and ask questions that you've got. And I love seeing people's gardens over there. So create a free account and I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.